Good morning. Today is Saturday, August the 20th, and our lesson is Repent and Bear Fruit. And our lesson is coming from Matthew, the third chapter, the eighth verse through the twelfth. And the scripture lesson takes read, Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sinners I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit of, and fire. His wintering fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson, letting us know that we must start getting ready, that the Lord is coming. And when he does come, or when our time is come, we want to be done, did all that we can do. Uh, I'm going to read your passage from the Matthew Henry Concise Commentary. It says, to make application to the souls of the hearers is the life of preaching. So it was of John's preaching. The Pharisees laid their chief stress on outward observances, neglecting the weightier matters of the moral law and the spiritual meaning of their legal ceremonies. Others of them were detestable hypocrites, making their pretense to holiness a cloak for iniquity. The Sadducees ran into the opposite extreme, denying the existence of spirits and a future state. They were a scornful infidels of that time and country. There is a wrath to come. It is the great concern of everyone to flee from that wrath. God, who delights not in our own ruin, has warned us. He warns by the written word, by ministers, by consciences, and those are not worthy of the name of penalties. Are there privileges who say they are sorry for their sins, yet persist in them? It becomes penalty to be humble and low in their own eyes, to be thankful for the least mercy, patient under the greatest affliction, to be watchful against all appearance of sin, to abound in every duty, and to be charitable in judging others. Here is a word of caution, not to trust in our privileges. There is a great deal which carnal hearts are apt to say within themselves, to put aside the convincing, commanding power of the word of God. Multitudes, by resisting in the resting in the honors and mere advantages of their being members of an, in a, of an outward church, come short of heaven. Here is a word of terror to the careless and secure. Our corrupt hearts cannot be made to produce good fruit unless the regenerating spirit of Christ graft the good word of God upon them. And every tree, however high in gifts and honors, however green in outward, and outward professions and performances, if it bring not forth good fruit, the fruits meet for repentance, is hewn down and cast into the fire of God's wrath, the fittest place for barren trees. What else are they good for? If not fit for fruit, they are fit for fuel. John shows the design and intention of Christ's appearing, which they were now speedily to expect. No outward forms can make us clean. No ordinance by whomsoever administered or after whatever mode can supply the want of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and of fire. The purifying and cleansing power of the Holy Spirit alone can produce that purity of heart and those holy afflictions which accompany salvation. It is Christ who baptized with the Holy Ghost. This he did in the extraordinary, extraordinary gifts of the Spirit sent upon the apostles. Is This he does in the grace and comforts of the Spirit given to those that ask him. Observe here, the our church is Christ's floor. 
true believers that are as weak, substantial, useful, and valuable. Hypocrites are as chaff, light and empty, useless and worthless, carried about with every wind. These are mixed, good and bad, and the same our communion. They, there is a day coming when the wheat and the chaff shall be separated. The last judgment will be the distinguishing day when saints and sinners shall be parted forever. In heaven the saints are brought together and no longer scattered. They are safe and no longer exposed, separated from corrupt neighbors without and corrupt afflictions within, and there is no chaff among them. Hell is the unquenchable fire, which will certainly be the portion and punishment of hypocrites and unbelievers. Here life and death, good and evil, are set before us. According as we now are in the field, we shall be then in the floor. Amen. We want to make sure that we are working. We are working toward our soul salvation because it will come a time to our end. Many um, are saying that, you know, that the Lord is coming and they want to get ready for the Lord coming. And we do want to get ready, um, but also realize that many of us is dead and gone before that time comes. So we want to do our job while we live. We want to make sure that we are getting ready now because we don't know when our end is. We want to do the work and the will of our Father. I pray that you meditate on this lesson today and y'all have a wonderful and blessed day.